so it seems like a lot of people don't really know just how powerful their CPUs are. Now while the information may seem kind of classified, CPU information and benchmarks are a lot more accessible than you might think. Hey what's up guys, my name is Andrew and today I will be showing you how to run an Intel CPU diagnostic. Now while it may come as a surprise, the tool that I like to use the most is none other than Intel's own diagnostic tool. Now some of the main reasons that I really like to use this tool is the fact that it's reliable, it's very easy to use, and best of all, it really delivers the data in a readable and quite simple manner. So the perks of running one of these are pretty straightforward. So in addition to just diagnosing problems, the diagnostic will run a whole host of tests and then relay the data back to you once it's finished. So said data could be anything from power efficiency to a live 3D graphical performance test. So lucky for us, the actual size of the tool is quite tiny and I will be providing the download link to Intel's website in the description below. So after the minute download is complete, go ahead and open it up to get started. So upon opening, you may see a box that will ask you to update the tool, which you can of course update if you want, I mean that's not going to hurt anything, but if you really don't want to go through the time and effort of updating, just go ahead and click close and run the IPDD. Now once it's open, you're going to see a whole slew of data that will look very, very confusing all over the UI, but it's not that hard to understand. So on the top left, you'll see all your system info, such as the number of cores, the amount of RAM you have, as well as your GPU. Now just to the right of that is an Intel CPU animation, which may seem laggy, but that's actually normal. So then in the bottom left, we have the testing module, which is where all of the status will be displayed, as well as your start and stop buttons. And then finally on the bottom right, you have your features and parameters, which will indicate which field of the CPU test received a pass or a fail. So knowing this, you can go ahead and press start to initiate the test. So all throughout the test, you'll be informed of all the different data about your CPU and the different scores that it's receiving based on each one. So some of the sample categories that this can include are the CPU temperature, the GPU load, as well as the number of cores used. So while the initial test really doesn't take long, towards the end, the CPU will be put under full load. So the whole purpose of putting the CPU under full load will be to test its ability to run at max over a long period of time. So this will go on for a few minutes and then the diagnostic will be complete. So interpreting the data is pretty easy. You can just scroll through the bottom left panel and see how your CPU did underneath all the different sections. So the real question is, what does this data mean? Well, although this won't solve any problems with your CPU, it's not meant to. It's really just there to help you begin to resolve any potential problems that could be the CPU's fault or somewhere else within the system if everything checks out. Well, now you know how to run an Intel CPU diagnostic. Definitely be sure to let me know down in the comments below if this video was helpful. And if you enjoy InfoCanon, then please be sure to leave a like on this video. Well, that's all for this video. If you like this content, then I would encourage you to check out some of my others. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. But anyway, guys, this has been Andrew with InfoCanon, and until next time, thank you for watching.